What's going on doll fans? It is your boy Dylan and I'm here to do my recap. It's a little bit late. It's about 9 40 p.m. my time on the west coast obviously after midnight on the east coast so uh you know some people probably won't see this till tomorrow but it is what it is. Um I did want to just get it in real quick. It's not going to be a long video. There's not really a lot to say. It was obviously the third preseason game. Very few starters actually played and not even for that long it was mostly backups and this is obviously the you know um uh the game for the backups and for the back end roster guys to really show their stuff so i'm just gonna be really quick through this i'm not even gonna you know spend a lot of time just go through the the base overall stats from this game and then which don't even really matter nor does the final um uh, score, although we did win, so that is obviously fun. And you know, Reed Sinnott, uh, you know, had two nice drives towards the end of the game in the fourth quarter uh, to come back, you know, down from double digits to get the win. So that was nice to see, and it was fun, and it did get a little bit more exciting uh, as the game went on. Started off kind of boring, but um, but yeah. So let's get into this. Obviously, we did win 29 to 26. Uh, Cincinnati had 413 total yards to our 388. They had 293 passing yards to our 319. They had 120 rushing yards to our 69. They were 6.3 yards per play. We were 6.5. Neither team lost a fumble. We threw an interception. We were uh, They were 53% on third downs. We were 54%. They had the ball for 31 minutes and 7 seconds. We had it for 28.53. They had 11 penalties. We had 5. Um, yeah, they had a bunch of penalties on offense in particular. Uh, and then a couple of not noticeable things. Obviously, Reed Sinnett played the entire game. So he was 22 for 33, 343 yards, 2 touchdowns, and 1 interception. Garrett Dokes, Jared Dokes led the way for us rushing with 16 attempts, 56 yards, 2 touchdowns, and a 3.5 average. Um, let's see, receiving. Kirk Merritt had another good day with 3 receptions on 5 targets for 72 yards and a score. Malcolm Perry racked up 4 for 5 for 69. Khalil McLean, 3 of 3 for 57. Kai Loxley, 5 of 8 for 46. Chris Myark, 1 for 1 for 34 yards and a touchdown. That was obviously the the last one, the last drive of the Dolphins for the game um, in which they drove downfield and got the game-winning touchdown. Um, yeah, and then, you know, so there was uh, Jordan Scarlett was 2 for 2, 29. Patrick Laird, 3 of 4 for 28. Uh, let's see, Calvin Munson had a forced fumble, but we obviously did not get it. They retrieved it. Um, let's see, Josh Harvey Clemens, Sam, Egg, uh, uh, ha, damn it, how did he pronounce his name? Uh, uh, Iguavoen, Iguavoen, ah, fuck, man, Dougley Duron, credit to him, man, he, uh, he just made a video the other day in which he actually pulled up the, um, on the Dolphins website, they have a place where you can go where go to where there's an audio recording of the players saying their name and pronouncing it for you uh and it was like Iguavoen, i think god damn it i can't remember but anyway josh harvey clemens sam Iguavin, Iguavoen, uh benito jones and noah igbenogany all had past breakups noah actually had a good a good play today um yeah let's see i mean noah had a tackle for loss how's about that um yeah, other than that, Jason Sanders was 3 for 3. Yeah, so look, you know, um, like I said, Kirk Merritt had a good day. Reed Sinnott had a good day. Um, I mean, it was... There's really not much to talk about, honestly. I mean, I'm, I'm just really at a loss for what to say. I mean, there's, there's really not. I mean, and it was, you know, it was an up and down game. Uh, there was good, there was bad. Obviously, it was all the, the backups. I mean, most of the people that, you know, pl most of the guys that played in this game aren't even going to be on, you know, the roster soon. So, um, and and honestly, I mean, when it comes down to, you know, the, the very nuanced, you know, things to take away, I mean, I, I don't even really, you know, know what 
I, I don't even have enough football knowledge to be able to, you know, say like, oh, these guys are bad in their technique or whatever. I'm learning that kind of stuff, but like, you know, so there's really not a lot to say, and that's really for the coaching staff anyway. After they go back and put film on and you know make their evaluations, the big thing though, of course, is that on Tuesday, um is cut down day so we have to get down to the 53 man final roster we do have um uh uh a slightly expanded practice squad i think we, we talked about it earlier on reason show i think it's 12 12 man practice squad but there is a slightly um larger practice squad so we're going to have to cut down to that on tuesday so that's going to be interesting obviously two weeks from tonight is our first game of the season against the New England Patriots. Uh, so it is going to be really interesting to see how this roster plays out. Obviously how it shakes out. Obviously the wide receiver room is, is super, you know, intriguing and has been a hot topic of conversation. Uh, so we are, you know, and it's going to be really interesting. That's going to be the big news really probably between now and Tuesday um, obviously the other thing, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because you guys know how I feel, but the other big topic of conversation has been Deshaun Watson, um, and the, the trade there, possible trade there. And look, you know, I'm just going to say this. I've been telling everybody, you know, since the beginning that the Dolphins were always going to be the number one spot for him to, to, to go to if, and when he gets traded, I still hold true to that. And that, that seems to, you know, be the case, um, I have also said consistently that I wouldn't do it. I don't want to, you know, deal with the draft capital we'd have to give up, the, you know, giving up on Tua, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, like, not to mention the potential legal issues and, you know, there's just, there's a lot of reasons why I wouldn't do it. Um, you know, even as good a player as he is, I just wouldn't do it. So, but, uh Anyway, like I said, I don't, I don't want to take too long. I mean, you can watch any of my, you know, previous videos where I talked about it. If you guys want to know how I feel, I'm sure the topic of, topic of conversation is going to be around until something more definitive happens. Uh, but, you know, look, at the end of the day, this Desha until, you know, until he, you know, gets charged and you know goes to court or until he gets traded somewhere else or until he gets traded to the dolphins or until you know the nfl comes out and says deshaun watson is absolutely not going to be able to play this year or you know until the trade deadline happens right so any one of those things that is a definitive event right uh occurring you know barring any of those things unfortunately i think that this you know, dark cloud is going to hang over the um, the Dolphins organization this this season um, because they're not going to come out and you know Brian Flores' post uh, game um, you know remarks in his press conference just add to that right and because they're not going to say that they're not in on Watson and they're not going to fucking completely 100% buy into Tua and say that he's our guy and we're not trading for Deshaun Watson. They're not going to do that because they are in on Deshaun Watson. And look, until the trade deadline happens, uh, you know, barring him, you know, going to court or jail or whatever or getting traded somewhere else, uh, barring any one of those other definitive events, um, until the trade deadline happens, it's going to be something that's involved. Um, it's going to be a, you know, storyline that follows the Dolphins this season for sure. And God forbid, you know, especially too, if at the beginning of the year, I mean, because, you know, like I said, like I've said before, we have a, a couple tough games for sure to start the season against divisional opponents. Uh, I, my biggest concerns for this Dolphins roster are the offensive line, the overall depth um, across the roster and, you know, the injury uh, COVID situation, which has been far worse than I would want it to be at this point in the season. Um, and so, you know, God forbid if we start off slow, right? If we, you know, if we start off slow and we struggle out the gate in the first handful of games, then there is some possibility that it ends up getting pushed. Um, and he ends up being a Miami Dolphin, Deshaun Watson, that is. So anyway, enough of that. I really don't want to take any more time on that because 
I'm just tired of it, if I'm being honest, and 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 whatever. And I, I would love, love, love for the Dolphins to just come out and say, Tua's our guy, we have no interest in Deshaun Watson, and then just dead it there. But that's not going to happen. And frankly, even if Flores did say something like that, it would be hard to believe him because of some of his, uh, you know, previous history here um, and the, you know, previous lies that he's been caught in. So, uh, but either way, man, I wish something definitive would just happen so it's done and so we know and we can stop fucking talking about it. And, uh, you know, obviously, though, I want them to not trade for Watts and I want them to stick with Tua and... Um, I'm just ready for the regular season, man. But anyway, with that, we got two weeks away. It is almost here. Um, look, you know, unless something does happen with Deshaun Watson, likely the biggest news out of the next two weeks is going to be the cut downs, um, roster cut downs. So, you know, we'll have to wait and see how it plays out. Uh, but, you know, I'm ready for the season either way, um, and I am excited either way. Um, one, because it's a brand new football season and I get to watch my Miami Dolphins and it's a fresh slate. It's a fresh schedule. You know, we haven't won anything. We haven't lost anything yet. So there's an opportunity. There are still 17 opportunities out there, and I'm looking forward to watching my team play. Um, and also because I have been getting really involved uh, or a lot more involved in the Dolphins community, particularly on YouTube, uh, you know, with Reason. And, I, you know, I just got onto Larry's show the other day, popped in there for a little bit and, and chopped it up with them. So it's been a good time and I really enjoyed it. And I, you know, it's, it's good to actually for like once in my life uh, or at least in a very, very long time. You know, it feels good to actually have a place where I feel like I'm part of a community. Um, so that is nice. And so, you know, uh, either way, I'm going to enjoy myself and enjoy my time with my fellow doll fans and, you know, hope for the best. I'm prepared already for the worst, but I'm hoping for the best. And so let's hope we get that. All right, with that, I'm going to get out of here. I hope you guys appreciate my perspective. If you do, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the bell if you want to get the alerts. Share my channel and videos with your friends and family. Leave your questions, comments, and concerns down in the comment section. And, of course, as always, follow me on Twitter at Dylan Tartaro. And with that, I am out. I'll see you all soon. Fins up.